Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, welcome to MMU Speaks on Facebook Live. My name is Prof. Dr. Muhammad Yusuf alias from the Faculty of Engineering. So today, we'll, I'm going to go through the why being industry preferred and entrepreneurial in the engineering and engineering technology fields is important. I'm sure at this point of time, you were wondering, why do I need to choose engineering? What kind of engineering it is? And why should I go to MMU? Why do I need to choose faculty of engineering in MMU? So what is engineering? So the definition according to Oxford Learners Dictionary, engineering is the activity of applying scientific knowledge to the design, building and control of machines, roads, bridges, electrical equipment, etc. So actually engineering is a broad field. It consists of uh, adhering to the needs of the society, looking at the analysis of scientific knowledge and at the same time incorporating creativity. So this is what makes an ideal engineer. It, consi it, it, con it um, contains all the um, important elements. Yeah? So inside the mind of the engineer, you can see that an engineer has the logical mind, the analytical mind, practical mind, they are systematic, they are innovative, and at the same time, they are looking at being ethical, environmental friendly, and of course, become a professional. Um, if you look around you, you can see everything surrounding you actually are made out of engineering and the applications of engineering you wake up every morning you will see your alarm clock you look at the um, air condition you look at the hi-fi the the uh, television your cars the roads the buildings all are made because of engineering these are the applications of engineering that we see in everyday life so engineering disciplines are actually very broad. Yeah? There are a lot of types of engineering out there, but the common objective of all this engineering field is actually to improve the quality of life. If you look around, there are electrical engineers, there are electronics engineers, mechanical engineers, biomedical engineers, civil engineers, and even today, there are a lot of new types of engineering field coming up such as the nanotechnology and so on. So all this engineering field has one common goal, which is in improving the quality of human life. Looking at the industries, almost all industries actually requires engineer. You look at the telecommunication industries, the aerospace industries, power generation. These are the common industries that you can find engineers in it. But there are also other fields or other uh, disciplines out there that you don't see the engineers at the front line. For example, e-commerce, uh, information system, or if you go to national defense or automobile, these are not a common engineering field, but there are engineers working behind to ensure that all these industries will be able to serve the human being. So there are different types of engineers out there. There are engineers who work in the research and development, which are called the R&D engineer. There are engineers who work at the factory line or the manufacturing line. So these are the product engineers. There are engineers who are working in the processing line as a process engineer. Those engineers who are maintaining the system, ensuring all the systems are working well. These are the maintenance engineer. We also have consulting engineer who will advise the, uh, for example, in the uh, building up new things or building up new, uh, setting up new buildings and so on. You need a consultant which are from the engineering field. And you have those engineers that go down and survey and do uh, the on-field testing. These are the field engineers. But there are also engineers who work as sales engineer, right? Even though you can see that people who can market items, there are a lot of businesses, there are a lot of uh, marketing people who can be selling items, but the one that really understand the working of the machines, the working of the equipments are the engineers. 
these are the ones that can sell the devices, all the equipments much, much better as compared to the normal salesperson. Right? And of course, there are also engineers who work as academicians, similar like what I'm doing today. As a job functions for the engineering, there, there are a lot of key functions. If you refer back to the earlier slides that I was showing to you about the different types of engineer. So these types of engineer are working in, has different job functions. Of course, for the R&D engineer, they are working into developing and researching new uh, equipments or new devices that can be used in our daily life. Um, there are, once this have been researched and developed, of course, we need to send it out for prototyping. And this is part of the prototyping and innovation. And once this has been, um, the prototype has been created or innovated, you need to measure, you need to test it up to ensure that what is being sent out will be safe for the human being. So there will be measurement and calibration. But there are also engineers who are looking at trying to solve our daily problems because there will be problems every day. There will be problems popping out. Right? Uh, so there will, there will always be problems in our life. So these problems need solutions. And one of the way that to solve this problem is to get the engineers to work and define, analyze, as well as solving the problems that have arisen. Right? And in order to get the solutions, one of the thing, one of the most important thing that we will be looking at is of course to come up with a cost effective solutions. An engineer is not only looking at how to make things work, but looking at how effective, how um, we can save the, in terms of the monetary, in terms of the environmental and so on. So the, the devices or the equipments or the solutions that are proposed by engineers should not only be effective, but is also uh, reducing the cost as well as increasing the productivity. One of the main field as we are looking at today is telecommunication. MMU as one of the subsidiary of Telecom Malaysia is focusing very much in the telecommunication field, which is um, offered by both our campuses in Cyberjaya as well as in Malacca. So why telecommunication? So if you look at what is happening today, looking at the pandemics and so on, you will see that telecommunication plays an important role. That's why we're having our live video uh, uh, on Facebook, for example. We have video on um, uh, video meeting, uh, video conferences and so on. There is a need for a very good telecommunication system. And if you look at development uh, of the global ICT, um, up till 2019, there has been a high demand, especially in the cellular telecommunication and also mobile broadband. And this type of increment, if you look at it, the pattern looks as if it will never stop. And looking at the studies done by AT Kearney itself, they have looked at how ASEAN countries, for example, will be having a high demand for telecommunication. So when there is a demand, of course, there must be a supply. And in this case, in order to support this demand for telecommunication, who else do you need but the engineers who will be working in improving the telecommunication that we already have. Based on the survey done by the Board of Engineers Malaysia, there are three top paying employment sectors in engineering, particularly there's the oil and gas, of course, um, looking at the industries, Oil and gas is the main uh, employment sectors of engineering, followed by manufacturing and infrastructure projects. Although they are not directly related to electrical and electronics, but all three sectors, believe it or not, require a lot of electrical, electronics and mechanical engineers. Without the electrical, electronic and mechanical engineers, these industries will not be able to work. Thus, there is a high need of the electrical, electronic, as well as the me mechanical engineers. Yeah? Board of Engineers Malaysia has also done a study on what um, an how an engineer view um, his job or her job himself. 
So looking at it, of course, most people will say engineering is a very, very challenging job. If you ask any engineering students, they will see engineering is a very challenging and tough uh, subject to study. It is also very stressful and very competitive. But most of them will say that becoming an engineer is a rewarding. Basically, the amount of time that you spend to study engineering will be replaced, will be, uh, will be paid off once you go and work later on. So in MMU itself, as the first private university in Malaysia set up in 2006, we have been always focusing into ICT. And of course, we are trying to put and become the pioneer and the new frontier of the digital economy. And in order to support this, engineering is one of the main field that is required as part of this digital economy. So we have been uh, ranked in the time higher education. We are also ranked in the QS University ranking. And we have also been uh, awarded as the premier digital tech university. And according to Frost and Sullivan, um, they have done this, uh, the, the ranking and they have given MMU as the most preferred institute of higher learning by companies. And this survey is not done by MMU, but by Frost and Sullivan and MDEC themselves. So we have been considered as the main university for ICT. Apart from that, we have also been getting awards for the Putra Brand Award. We are the top three most entrepreneurial private university. We have been awarded Super Brand, the Malaysian Choice in 2019. And we, have, we are also part of the self-accreditation university. Right. And inside this ranking, um, of one of the main strength of the university has been in the engineering field. We have been ranked in the world ranking for QS world ranking for subject in the electrical and electronics engineering. For the past few years, we have always been in the top 300. For engineering, there are, uh, we actually have two different faculties serving the engineering field. We have the Faculty of Engineering, which is based in Cyberjaya, and is, this is where I'm uh, in, I'm attached to. Yeah? And there is also another Faculty of Engineering, which is called the Faculty of Engineering Technology in Malacca. So the differences between these two faculties are that they are offering some different courses, but there is a common thing about these two faculties, which is both are offering the telecommunication field. So if you want, if you would like to take a Bachelor of Engineering Electronics, majoring in telecommunication, you can choose either to go to Cyberjaya or you can also go to Malacca. So the one for Faculty of Engineering Technology in Malacca will be explained later by my colleague, Dr. Chan Yikit, after this. For Cyberjaya, for Faculty of Engineering in Cyberjaya, so we have five different uh, fields or five different degree programs that we are focusing on. And the, the degree programs are mostly catered towards the electrical and electronics field. And the reason for this is because we are located in the heart of the multimedia super co corridor in Cyberjaya. So the five fields that we are focusing on is electrical, pure electronics, electronics in majoring in computer, electronics majoring in nanotechnology, as well as electronics majoring in telecommunication. So these five fields um, are all accredited by the Engineering Accreditation Council. The vision for our faculty is to become a leading engineering faculty with global recognition for creation and dissemination of knowledge. And in order to achieve this mission, we always believe that we need to cultivate the talents to embrace the inquire, innovate, and uh, inspire. We are the excellent programs that we provide with together with the industry support. So as of today, we have a lot of um, areas that we are focusing on, but to cater the, what the industry needs, we look at, of course, the uh, hot topic today is looking at 5G and IoT. And in, um, in addition to that, we are also looking at cybersecurity, 
AI, blockchain, data literacy, energy, as well as optical fiber. We also have articulation programs with uh, foreign universities. If any of you will be interested to spend some time overseas, we have two main articulation pathway that have been um, embedded into our programs. The first one is an articulation pathway with Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand. And the other one is with Deakin University in Australia. So what these articulation programs means is that you will spend um, two years, the first two years in Malaysia, in FOE, and then the next two years, you can spend at the other university. So you will have the experience of having the lessons uh, over in uh, other countries. So we, this will be, this will giving, this will give you an opportunity to spend some time and experience uh, the lifestyle as well as the learning programs in some other universities. All our programs are accredited, so you don't need to worry about the uh, programs being recognized anywhere. So MMU ensure that the programs that we have are all accredited by the professional accreditation body. And in this case for engineering, we are all accredited by the Engineering Accreditation Council. So Engineering Accreditation Council consists of the Board of Engineers Malaysia, the Institution of Engineers Malaysia IEM, and also the Malaysia Qualification Agency or MQA. So all five programs that we are offering are all accredited, which means that in order to get PTPTN or any other sponsorship, it would not be any problems at all. Uh, we always believe that our programs need to be revised based on the ongoing and the uh, what is the current trend in the industries. So that's why we believe getting collaborations with the industries are very important. So because of this, we have a lot of linkages with the industries as well as government agencies. Of course, our main industrial collaboration would be our parent company, Telecom Malaysia as well as some other big players such as Huawei, um, JICA, um, ZTE, WeeBe, Western Digital, MCMC, QCells, etc. So we always believe that by collaborating with the industries, we will be able to always communicate with the industries and get the feedback from the industries of what the, require, the requirement and the demand is in the industries itself. In FOE, we have a lot of facilities to equip the students and in order to support the learning process. We have the Anechoic, the multi-purpose Anechoic Chamber. There are about 18 um, learning labs and we have about 10 uh, research labs all together at the Faculty of Engineering. All these labs will be able to support the learning process as well as the research processes at the faculty. Most of the time, people will say engineering students are squared. Yeah? But at our faculty, our engineering students are very, very active. I can tell you that they have a lot of activities done at the faculty to support um, their everyday learning process. Uh, for the students, they always organize their own activities such as uh, forums, um, workshops, and so on. And these are not really organized by staff. They are all organized by the student themselves. So at the end of the semester, for example, the IEEE MMU student branch will organize what is called engineering cooling. So they go somewhere else to refresh them before the final exam. Like last year, what they did is that they went to Tandem Hill in Banting for a retreat for these engineering students. And they always have, of course, whenever they have activities, they just love to get pizzas yeah? because that's the, the, the most important food and the most favorite food uh, by the students. We also organize trips to industries to ensure that we go and get the students to see what it's like in the real world. For example, last year, some students have been visiting the TSGI Earth Station in Cyberjaya they have also visited Q-Cells, a solar company, also in Cyberjaya. 
So all these companies, but because of our location in Cyberjaya, we are lucky to go and visit some of these companies which are also co-located in Cyberjaya. Some of the uh, activities by the um, students also include uh, community services. They have done community services to go to uh, villages. They go and visit some orphanage um, as well as schools to give talks and support as well as activities that involve um, the societies. And in uh, Faculty of Engineering, we have, uh, of course, we have the Engineering Society as the main society. But under Engineering Society, we have what is called the Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineer, IEEE uh, MMU Student Branch. We have the Institute of Electronics and Technology, IET, um, uh, from the UK. We also have specifically the Women in Engineering Society because we believe that the women engineers also need support together with the uh, the staff, the female st the lecturers in, uh, in the faculty. And we also have a specific sub chapter for the Power uh, Electronic Society or PES. Okay. Our students and staff have also been winning awards not only locally, not just in MMU, but also globally. In MMU, last year in 2019, our students um, have been getting all the awards um, for the leadership. Uh, for example, the male student leader goes to Hassan Abulaban, who is the uh, one of the committee member for IEEE. The female student leader of the year award, it was also from the Faculty of Engineering, Jo Yali. And the Golden Achievement Award is our one of the best uh, students that we have last year, Muhammad Hussein Salah Muhammad Haram from Syria. He has been winning a lot of awards, not only in, in MMU, but also um, Muhammad Salah has been recognized as the um, IEEE Region 10, which is for Asia Pacific Student Volunteer Award, as well as um, he is representing Malaysia at the Asia Pacific level. Our IEEE MMU Student Branch has also been recognized uh, in Malaysia as one of the best uh, IEEE Student Branch for the past few years, but we have also been recognized at the Asia Pacific level where we have won the IEEE Region 10 Exemplary Student Branch Award in 2018. Uh, our staff have also been winning awards and be, have been winning prizes. For example, uh, Dr. Mad Associate Professor Dr. Madini has uh, won the award, the Gold Award at the World Invention Creativity Olympic in uh, Korea. And this year, he has actually also won the IEEE uh, Vehicular Technology Society Award globally. It's not just recognized in Asia, but is a global award, it's a world award. Our Prof. IR Dr. Wong Hee Yong, which is our previous dean, has also been appointed as the Associate Director of the Engineering Accreditation Council Board members, Board of Engineers. Our students uh, have been experiencing a lot of hands-on and one of the activities that have been uh, organized annually is the MESCOP program. So MESCOP has been uh, organized since the early days of early 2000 and every year they have planned for different programs and visit different places. Last year, what MESCOP has done is they have uh, visited the uh, South Korea to experience the real life uh, development of 5G, where they have visited a few universities and schools, as well as the industry players in South Korea. So this program is not organized by the staff, it's organized by the students for the students themselves. They have um, collected the funds, they have uh, um, arranged everything on their own. So this is how the students have um, actually practice what they have learned. So MMU is very proud to be one of the 5G education hub in Malaysia. We are looking at how to develop the talents and upskilling of the existing force to ensure that we'll be able to cater the 5G technology 
that is currently one of the hot topics in the world. So we have been placing some of our plans to ensure that we have future-proof talents, such as we have research um, classrooms, our uh, smart uh, street lights, our enable outdoor uh, parking system. Everything has started to incorporate 5G and then. We are also very lucky because we have been working very closely with our parent company, Telecom Malaysia, on the development of 5G. So we have set up the 5G antenna system for the 28 gigahertz on our faculty building. And we are probably the only private university in Malaysia that have our own 5G base station in our parking lot for us to do our 5G testing and 5G experiments. So the students have been benefiting from all this 5G test bed set up in MMU. So for example, last year, our students have experienced the testing in um, around MMU uh, using whatever the equipment that have been set up by VB or Unify Mobile um, in the campus. We have also uh, benefit of the, uh, benefited from the industries themselves. We have been receiving um, speakers from the industry, for example, from Unify Mobile. Uh, we have speakers coming from Huawei that have been coming to give talks on 5G. So uh, we have been organized this in order to ensure that our students are aware of what is going on in the tele, especially in the telecommunication industry. Uh, aside from the 5G research, we also have a dedicated lab, uh, which is called the Digital Home and Lifestyle Research Center, which has been garnering a lot of awards in the past. And this particular lab, which is sponsored by Huawei and MCMC, has been looking into the Internet of Things, making sure that like, it looks as if it is an IoT connected home with healthcare monitoring as well as machine learning and deep learning. So MMU is very proud to say that we are not only uh, giving a learning experience to the students, we are also encouraging students to come up with their own innovation. So we are focused, we are also uh, looking into the innovation and entrepreneurship. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, we are always working very closely together with the industries in order to ensure that we have an integrated programs and all our programs are related to the current trend. So looking at this ecosystem in MMU, we are giving the learning, the typical traditional learning. And aside from that, we have the entrepreneurial ecosystem where we have a special uh, center called the Entrepreneurship Development Center. We have the um, activities, um, staff coming in, guest speakers coming in. All these activities actually is to ensure the students are given the best learning time, uh, not only in classes, but also um, getting the experience firsthand from the industries. So part of our activities that we have done in the past, like in 2018, we have what is called the TMRND Smart Campus Design Challenge. And we have, we gathered the students and staff to participate in this design challenge. And the winners were given the, um, uh, is considered as part of the MMU Innovative Entrepreneurs. Right? Uh, we are very proud at MMU, uh, at FOE, at the Faculty of Engineering. Although we are Faculty of Engineering and do not have a business, uh, are not considered as a business-minded or marketing um, faculty, we have actually proven that we are not only looking at engineering fail. Last year, um, our faculty, the Faculty of Engineering, has been awarded as the best entrepreneurial faculty in the whole MMU. And we actually beat uh, the likes of Faculty of Management as well as the Faculty of Business. So we are very proud of that. We have also won the best spin-off um, uh, by the company called Paul Tech Care. And this uh, company is um, taken care of by one of our lecturers, Dr. Mohtar. And we have also won the best entrepreneurial staff uh, by Associate Professor Dr. Tan Ching Xiong, who has started the company called Terra Phoenix. And for the past three years, yeah, not only in MMU, 
we have proven that we can also be the best in Malaysia, where all three companies um, uh, for the past three years, the winner for the best startup at the International Invention, Innovation and Technology Exhibition, ITEX Malaysian level, are all coming from the Faculty of Engineering. In 2017, it was Terra Phoenix, the company that produced iCycle by Dr. Tan Chin And then in 2018, we have the UTOC services. And in 2019, it was Paul Tech Care. So all these three companies are actually coming up from the Faculty of Engineering. We are also very proud of our alumni. So we have some of um, very successful alumni, and I only can name a few here. Right? Uh, for example, we have uh, Mr. Noor Hilmi, who is the CEO and co-founder of IX Telecom. He is uh, from the Bachelor of Engineering in Telecommunication, and he graduated in 2003. So he has already started up a company, and IX Telecom is providing a virtual telecommunication network, not only in Malaysia, but also to about 40 other countries around the world. And IX Telecom has been winning award, and recently he has also won award in Berlin. Uh, we also are very proud with one of our alumni as well, Dr. Kevin Kuejuyi. He is uh, one of the scientists that formed the Event Horizon Telescope to take the first image of a supermassive black hole. And Dr. Kevin Kuei is actually um, currently located in Taiwan. So he, that means our degree program is actually recognized worldwide and not just in Malaysia. We also have engineers who have been uh, moving on from the engineering field. They have re-engineered their own career. For example, Mr. Johan Irwan from FET and also our own Mr. Yani Hardinata Hairuddin from our FOE, Faculty of Engineering, who graduated in 2003. He has started up what is called Ladang Kumaju, a halal chicken supply company. Of course, that is not in engineering, but he has been a very successful entrepreneur. So why should you pursue an engineering degree at FOE? So there are a lot of reasons out there. There's 1,001 reasons why you you can come to Faculty of Engineering, you can enjoy your studies all over at the Faculty of Engineering. There are ample job opportunities out there for, uh, for the graduates. And we are uh, in FOE, our, uh, the, what do you call that? The employment rate after graduation is almost 96%, which is done by the, uh, which is survey done by the Ministry of Higher Education themselves. And engineering fee has a good starting pay. We have the world-class engineering education here in uh, MMU. There's opportunity for you to contribute towards the national development. And of course, it is also to contribute towards the mankind in general. There are facilities in MMU, especially at the Faculty of Engineering. And we are lucky that we are located in Cyberjaya, which is a very uh, upcoming place. There are a lot of new buildings, there are a lot of new areas, and there are a lot of new companies in Cyberjaya to support for the, indus for the ICT industries. So Cyberjaya is becoming one of the happening city, and we are, uh, there is an MRT that is currently being built, which will stop over at Cyberjaya. So hopefully you will decide to choose Faculty of Engineering. We have been proud to produce a lot of good graduates and a lot of successful graduates in the past. So if you need more information, you can visit the, um, our Facebook link at MMUFOE or you can, visit us, uh, you can visit us on Instagram at MMU Engineering. Thank you so much and hope you have uh, gained a lot of information on the Faculty of Engineering. So if you do decide to come to the Faculty of Engineering, you are more than welcome to ask us questions if you do have any. Thank you very much. And now I'm handing you over to my colleague at the Faculty of Engineering Technology, Associate Professor Dr. I.R. Chan Yekin. Over to you, Dr. Chan. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen parents and students. I'm Dr. Chan from Faculty of Engineering and Technology. Uh, thank you, Prof. Yusof, for his very interesting uh, introduction and uh, sharing uh, for the Faculty of Engineering in Cyberjaya. 
So now it's my turn to talk about the being industry preferred and entrepreneurial in engineering field. So I would like to uh, quickly uh, introduce myself. I'm the currently Deputy Dean uh, Research and Innovation at the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. I'm also a professional engineer with the uh, Board of Engineer Malaysia, professional technologies with Malaysia Board of Technologies, and I hold several professional membership at other institutions. Right. So today, uh, I would like to share about how to become an entrepreneurial and as well as to become an industry preferred um, through the effort of the faculty. So first of all, I would like to ask the uh, audience, what do you know about an engineer? So typically, um, many of people would think that engineers will, help, will wear a helmet, uh, working at the site, looking at the building, how the progress of the building a bridge or the uh, roads, or probably uh, engineers are designing some electrical uh, appliances. But uh, let me tell you that uh, engineers actually change the world. Why would I say that? So looking at this slide, uh, you will notice that all these creation and innovation uh, ideas actually is come from the effort of the engineers. So internet, everybody nowadays cannot work without internet, right? So the first iPhone that uh, have been uh, published in 20, uh, 2007 have changed the world tremendously. Nowadays, we are all using this kind of handphone and some of us, we have not only one handphone, but uh, probably two or three handphones, right? We use computers, uh, transportation is a need. Um, we watch Astro, whereby we are using the uh, satellite as the uh, um, device to transmit our system. And also, we have this uh, very advanced robot by SoftBank, which is called Pepper. All this invention and the creation is actually uh, from the hard work of the engineers. So basically, uh, engineers is translating the current technologies into a solution that solves a certain problem. So basically, an engineer will be a bridge between a technologist and the end user. So we will fulfill the requirement of the end user and in order to solve a certain uh, problem. So I would like to um, uh, request or I would like to inquire, please join us to change the world as an engineer. So currently, we have a Faculty of Engineering and Technology in Malacca campus, whereby these faculties are offering uh, five, uh, the three Bachelor of Engineering and two Diploma courses. Uh, three of these uh, Bachelor of Engineering is focusing on electronics, majoring in robotics and automation. And we have electronics majoring in telecommunication as well as Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical. So two of our diploma uh, program is focused on electronics and also mechanical engineering. So if you need more information, do visit us at the uh, website appeared at the uh, right hand side, right? So if you are enrolled into our Faculty of Engineering and Technology in Malacca, after four years of hard working, uh, as the Bachelor of Engineering or three years of the study in the diploma courses, then eventually we'll go to the end, which is a graduation, means you already get your license to operate as an engineer. So what is the next step, right? So some of you all will eventually join the industry, engage with the industry as an engineer. Some of you all probably will choose to become a businessman, a started on your own business, either in engineering or non-engineering field. Right, so the key uh, terms that we will actually focus on is in order for you to engage with the industry, so how to be industry preferred and entrepreneurial okay, in terms of the engineering field, right? So let me share a little bit about the, uh, how we can do, it, do this through our faculty. So according to the um, survey by the industry, Right. So the employee satisfactory with engineering graduate employability is according to this, the skill that uh, 
shown over here. So the top two skill is about the knowledge, fundamental general skill and also engineering skill. And the rest of the skill is about the interpersonal skill, is more towards the personal skill, right? So in our faculty or the rest of the faculty of engineering, so basically we will focus on the top two skill whereby we are trying to embed all these uh, important, uh, fundamental yet important engineering skill to our student. So the engineering skill uh, can be acquired through the faculty effort. So basically what we need to have is we have to get the programs updated, means it will follow the industry train. Um, we need to get industry involved so that they can uh, provide some suggestion and the uh, advice to us from time to time in order for us to update our syllabus. We need to make sure that there is a hands-on uh, experience on the student so that they are able to solve the complex engineering problem. And of course, the uh, faculty have to provide the uh, sufficient uh, facilities so that the students are able to, to experience okay, in terms of the, uh, during their study. So Faculty of Engineering and Technology basically is focused on very niche ICT area and we are aimed to produce a graduate that are industry trend setting, right? So one of the initiative by our faculty, Faculty of Engineering and Technology is called the Industry in Campus. So do, in this initiative, um, we actually invited the industry to take part in many uh, activities. Example, we actually invited them to review our curriculum. We, uh, uh, we invited them to join, jointly supervise the student in terms of a FYP project. We have competition uh, sponsored by the industry. We also invite them to deliver lectures. Of course, uh, we also arrange the industry visit for the student. So example, in this slide, uh, listed three subjects that actually is, uh, is uh, delivered to the student. Okay? And we actually uh, invited the industry to give the uh, portion of the lectures, example for the last uh, uh, subject, which is the semiconductor packaging and uh, test, we actually invite the guest lecture from Infineon uh, Malacca, which is a very huge uh, multinational uh, company in the semiconductor area to deliver the lectures. Besides that, we also um, fine tune our subjects so that it will be at the latest uh, technology train. Okay. Uh, of course, nowadays, the uh, RR 4.0 and 5G is very hot and with some others, uh, uh, big topics such as AI. Therefore, we have actually offered the elective subject related to this field, okay, such as artificial intelligence application, adaptive manufacturing, Internet of Things, and also radio network uh, planning towards the uh, 5G. So we have the uh, external examiners okay, for three of our program so that uh, from time to time, they are able to revise our syllabus, our program, so that our syllabus and program are still relevant and up to date. Besides, we also have the industrial uh, advisory panels. Uh, we invite the um, industrial uh, players okay, uh, to become the industrial advisor for three of our program. So basically, they are come across. Uh, they are across all the uh, uh, multinational uh, industry. Okay, and uh, some of them is actually our alumni as well. And uh, since they already graduated, and many years, some of them is become the material position in the company. Therefore, they are coming back uh, to provide their service in terms of uh, given the uh, advice and also suggestion to improve our program. So the FET is also equipped with the teaching lab uh, so that the student will have the uh, sufficient hands-on experience. Um, currently, we have 25 uh, teaching labs for the undergraduate and we have two labs for diploma courses and foundation and seven research labs to support the uh, program. Uh, 
Um, and we also have a training center that actually sponsored by ZTE. I will go to in detail uh, in a later slide. So I just want to flip through some of the uh, labs that we have. Example, we have thermodynamic uh, experiment, the diesel engine test bed, computer aided manufacturing or 3D printing example. And we also have a mechanical workshop. So all these um, labs is actually to equip the mechanical students so that they will have sufficient hands-on experience before they graduate and work in the industry. We also have automation uh, lab, vision inspection experiment, uh, robotics lab, um, and all these are catered for our robotics and automation student. We do have the printer circuit board the preparation and also fabrication. So this is a very interesting uh, um, the lab facilities so that to export the student and they are able to um, design their own PCB and electronic circuit fabricate and test. Besides, we also have the telecommunication uh, equipment and also the uh, lab experiment. The interesting experiment on the microwave uh, devices such as a radar system. Okay. And uh, we have this ZTE training center established in uh, Malacca campus under the uh, Faculty of Engineering and Technology we have the equipment of the uh, base station, the uh, server, and also the transport network. Uh, and this equipment is sufficient for us to demonstrate uh, how the uh, mobile uh, communication can be performed. And the simulation, the actual simulation or emulation can be done through this lab. And this lab is towards the upgrading to 5G to cater the future uh, usage. So quite a number of training courses have been uh, conducted uh, in this uh, lab to the student as well as to the staff of our faculty. Right. So this slide just shows uh, some of the uh, recent uh, courses that have been offered by ZTE in this ZTE uh, training center. So it's covered uh, 5G technologies, IoT, and up to the uh, network planning and deployment strategy for the 5G. Uh, this is definitely will benefit our student in terms of the latest trend of the uh, telecommunication uh, expansion in Malaysia. Right, besides, we also have research center that uh, support uh, our uh, program. Example, we have this center for robotics, uh, sorry, center for remote sensing and surveillance technology, and center for sustainability, communication, and IoT. These two center will support our telecommunication program. And we have center for advanced robotics to support uh, robotic and automation program and center for advanced mechanical and green technology to support our mechanical program. So now is the, uh, I would like to talk a little bit on uh, how to embed the entrepreneurial uh, mindset into the student. So basically uh, we will have uh, the subjects that are relevant to the entrepreneurship um, we will organize a series of the uh, talks, seminar by the industry as well as the, our alumni. Um, we also encourage students to participate, especially on the competition and other activities that help them to upscale and upgrade their personal skill. Right? Lastly, we will have the uh, bunch of experienced uh, lecturer in order to perform the mentorship if the students are interested to participate in competition as well as to go further on entrepreneurship activities. All right, so this is a list of the subject that actually uh, relevant to the entrepreneurship, uh, such as the uh, project management, finance, and entrepreneurship, right? So through this uh, subject, uh, the uh, concept of management, finance, and entrepreneurship will be introduced to the student. So uh, these subjects are uh, distributed across the different program. Okay, example, a design, prog design program is very good for a student to start to have some innovation uh, and, and proper guideline on how to develop a particular project. So industry engagement definitely is uh, very important in order to uh, shape our student into the entrepreneurial uh, mindset, right? So we will organize talks, uh, visit seminars and some other activities such as competition um, together with the industry.
So this is our industrial partners uh, that we have already engaged. So it's just a list of them, uh, which include some of the multinational company. So we conduct uh, visits. Okay, we make sure that our students uh, participate in the industry visit so that they can explore themselves on the working environment, how the laser stage of the development in the industry. Right. So actually, we have to make sure that all the students will attend at least one industry visit before they are graduating. So we also have a, a special lab called a RoboSpace. So this RoboSpace is a, um, particular, a special lab that designed uh, in such a way that we will help students to grow their idea, okay, especially for innovation idea in this lab. We can conduct a discussion in this lab. We also have the training to community uh, using this via this lab. And of course, the student can have their uh, setup uh, for a particular competition in this lab. So basically, this uh, robot space is, a, is part of the ecosystem so that we can connect the student, we can connect the community and the industry together, as well as our faculty in this single space. Right. Uh, as I mentioned, the alumni play a very important uh, role in our faculty. They are not only our industry advisor, we also invited them uh, back, to, back to the uh, campus so that they can share their knowledge, as well as we have frequent meetings with them um, so that they can provide a, a suggestion and improvement on our program and on our facilities. Right. So this is some of the example that uh, we have uh, organized. So we have invited our alumni back to share uh, their journey as entrepreneurial and also some of the, the alumni to share their experience uh, working in the industry, example in this case for digital transformation. Um, besides, we believe the innovation um, is a very, uh, in, in, through innovation, we can embed uh, the entrepreneurship um, mindset into the uh, student okay so we are encouraging the uh, all the innovation uh, activities uh, especially for the competition right. so um, throughout the years we have many competition that we already participate by our faculty right okay so we have uh, um, uh, through the uh, robot uh, competition uh, through the uh, shell eco marathon whereby we won a circular economy award um, besides, we also encourage our lecturers to take part in the competition. Uh, why lecturers is because I, the lecturers also need explosion, okay, as well as uh, to have the latest uh, um, development and knowing what are the people are trying to do um, at different uh, industry, right? So we have the lecturers uh, showcase their latest invention, okay, in uh, various competition. And of course, they have back uh, some of the uh, prices during this uh, competition. Right. So besides, we also encourage the student to take part uh, to some other competition other than the uh, very technical competition. Right. So this is two of the example. And we do have the um, uh, cooperation together, the partnership together with uh, Infineon uh, Malacca. Uh, the Infineum Malacca is uh, a very big uh, semiconductor uh, multinational company. So um, we have this Infineum week annually. During this week, we have all the uh, technical talk, seminar, uh, the uh, career fair with the Infineum, whereby the recruitment drive is actually organized in the, this Infineum week as well. And we do have the innovation uh, competition and the poster competition for this Infineum a uh, week. So all the students uh, can showcase their FYP project as well as the uh, some of the postgraduate project in this Infineon week. So this is just a list that uh, the recent uh, won uh, competition by the uh, Faculty of Engineering and Technology. Right. So I won't go into detail, uh, it's just to show uh, we are actually actively participate in various uh, competition. So besides, we also encourage students to join the clubs and society. 
right? So uh, we have robotic clubs, uh, the IET, uh, Institute of uh, Engineering and Technology, Engineering uh, Society, etc. So uh, we strongly believe that through these uh, clubs and society, the student can actually upskill themselves in terms of their interpersonal skill, the leadership, uh, the leadership skill, and some other soft skill as well. We also have a student exchange program with some of the foreigner uh, university. Okay, listed over here, they are. This is already the existing collaboration with university from Indonesia, Japan, Thailand, Korea, and uh, Myanmar. So this is one of the um, uh, inbound outbound uh, activities uh, whereby the we have this uh, global study program with Chiba University. So our student will be. Um, visiting the Chiba University in Japan and the Chiba University will also send their student to MMU. So with this kind of activities, the student will have a, a exploration, right? Um, in some others university and some others country. And this will definitely help them in, in the near future. Okay, we have some others, uh, the uh, student exchange program. Example, the La Salle uh, University for, of the Philippines and we have King Mongkot University of Thailand, Naraswan University of Thailand as well. So another interesting uh, program that we um, actually have in our faculty is called Peer Tutoring Program. So through this program, we actually uh, have a scheme in order to engage the senior student in order to guide um, our junior student, right? Especially uh, for those uh, very critical uh, subjects. Right. So through this uh, peer, tutoring, peer tutoring program, so the, we believe the, it can enhance the knowledge as well as the soft skill of the uh, peer tutor. Right. Okay. So uh, I would like to summarize the, uh, what I have uh, um, shared just now. So basically, um, our faculty is uh, preparing the recipe for the student in order for them to become industry preferred as well as the uh, uh, embed the entrepreneurial uh, mindset into the student via various kind of activities. Example, we have under this industry preferred, we have industry in campus, external examiner, industry advisor, up-to-date syllabus, well-equipped laboratory, uh, research center, and ZTE training center in order to uh, provide um, and enhance the skill, especially the engineering skill to our engineering student. So for entrepreneurial, uh, we introduce entrepreneurship subjects, uh, industries partnership um, via various uh, activities. Uh, we have alumni engagement, sharing their uh, experience as well as to feedback as the uh, industry advisory uh, board. Um, we strongly believe innovation uh, will able to establish within the student via various activities, technical activities such as competition. And we encourage students to act actively participate in student exchange program as well as the club activities. And last but not least, we have the peer tutoring program to brush up the uh, personal skill, right? So with this, uh, I would like to end uh, my uh, talk today. Uh, thank you for listening. So uh, MMU is have a latest uh, intake, which is on the September uh, intake for this year. It's a special intake for this year. Um, so for those that are interested to join us, okay, do visit us. Uh, if you need more information, do visit us at our website. Um, so thank you very much for listening again. Thank you.